Blasters, something that makes Star Wars one of the most iconic franchises in the world. But through all of the different blaster variants, there comes a question of ammunition. How do blasters work, and what are the differences between different ammunition types? Welcome to Star Wars Academy, today we're going to dive into the ammunition behind Star Wars' most iconic weapons. From searing plasma bolts to stun rings, ion discharges to sonic shockwaves, each type of blaster ammunition is more complex and more specialized than most fans realize. So how do they work? What's actually happening inside of these weapons? The standard blaster bolt is one of the most recognized visuals in all of Star Wars, a glowing, often red projectile that streaks through the air like a laser, but it's not actually a beam of light. It's a form of plasma, and it's much slower than light speed, which is why we can even see it move. Inside every blaster is a small gas reservoir filled most typically with Tabana, a hyper-reactive gas most famously mined in Cloud City on Bespin. When a shot is fired, a precise amount of this gas is released into a firing chamber. There, it's rapidly ionized using a power cell, basically electrified into a superheated plasma state. Next, the weapon's internal coils, often referred to in Legends as Galvan circuits, use electromagnetic fields to compress and shape the plasma into a stable, bolt-like form. A containment field keeps the plasma cohesive just long enough for it to hit the target before dispersing. The bolt is then launched down the barrel using similar magnetic acceleration. Think of it like a sci-fi railgun, but for charged plasma. The result is a glowing bolt that burns, melts, or explodes on impact, depending on the weapon's settings and power level. As for its color, that depends on the energy output and even the purity of the Tabana gas. Imperial weapons often use cheaper, red-emitting plasma, while Republic and Rebel lasers tend to emit blue or green bolts due to different calibration standards. A favorite among Stormtroopers, clones, and prison guards alike is the stun setting. Visually, it's totally distinct, a bright blue ring that expands outward as it flies. Unlike a lethal plasma bolt, a stun blast doesn't rely on heat or impact force. Instead, stun ammunition emits a low-frequency electromagnetic pulse designed to overwhelm the nervous system. When fired, the power cell generates a charged pulse that travels through expanding energy rings. Upon contact with a living target, the field containing the ring breaks, releasing the charged particles across the individual, scrambling the target's neural activity, essentially forcing the brain into a temporary shutdown. The effect is quick and non-lethal, though it's much less effective against armored targets, droids, or particularly resilient species. The signature expanding ring isn't just for style, it maximizes the area of contact, increasing the chance of a successful hit, especially when dealing with fast or evasive enemies. Because stun pulses rely on nervous system disruption, they're rarely effective against inorganic foes. This process can also be disrupted by breaking the ring before it reaches its target, like using a lightsaber to burst the containment field for the charged particles before it reaches its target. But for quick takedowns and prisoner retrieval, they're one of the safest options in a trooper's arsenal. If you need to stop a machine, ion weapons are your best friend. From ion pistols to massive ion cannons on rebel transports, this type of ammunition doesn't burn or blast, but instead disrupts electronics on a fundamental level. The mechanism is fairly elegant. Rather than firing plasma, an ion blaster releases a cloud of charged particles, usually electrons or another form of ionized gas molecules, which are propelled at high speeds using magnetic fields. When these particles strike a droid, vehicle, or shield system, they overload circuits, disable processors, and interrupt the flow of power. Think of it like a concentrated directional EMP. Because organic beings don't run on electricity the same way that machines do, ion blasts are typically non-lethal to living creatures. However, they can cause side effects like muscle spasms or disorientation in some species, especially if used at high settings or close range. Ion blasts are usually blue or white in color and can be devastating when used strategically, especially against armies that rely heavily on droids or air speeders. While they won't win a firefight against stormtroopers, they will shut down an entire battalion of battle droids in seconds. 
While soldiers of the Grand Army of the Republic are notorious for using this kind of weapon against the droid army of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, it's worth noting that their ion blasts are a combination of ionized gas like Tabana, as well as other charged particles to be used against both droids and living organisms. Blasters may rule the battlefield, but sonic weapons strike on a deeper level, literally. Instead of heat or electricity, they use vibroacoustic energy to deliver devastating shockwaves that bypass armor and tear targets apart from the inside. The most famous example comes from Geonosis, where Geonosian warriors wielded sonic blasters against Jedi and clones. These weapons emit tightly focused concussive pulses, traveling through air and striking targets with intense vibrational force. The tech behind them varies. Some sonic weapons use magnetic pulses to create vibratory shockwaves within a short range plasma shell. Others use diaphragms or coils that literally fire a pressure wave forward, not unlike real world sonic cannons used in crowd control. In the case of the Geonosian Sonic Blaster, these weapons emitted a sphere of condensed sonic energy held within a containment sphere. Just like a stun blast, when this sphere is ruptured, it would explode in a contained omnidirectional blast covering its target. However, much in the same way that a stun blast can be interrupted, if coming in contact with another energy or physical force before making its way to a living target, like that of a lightsaber for instance, the containment field would burst prematurely, inflicting no damage to its target. Unlike plasma bolts, sonic blasts are often invisible or appear as shimmering distortions, but their impact is anything but subtle. It can cause internal hemorrhaging, organ rupture, or knock a target unconscious, all without ever piercing armor. That's what makes them so dangerous. They just need to come into contact with you, armor or not, and your whole world comes to a vicious end. While most of the galaxy favors plasma weapons, there are some situations where a good old-fashioned projectile gets the job done better. Enter slug throwers. Slug throwers are weapons that fire physical bullets or slugs, either using chemical propellants like primitive firearms or with advanced tech like with electromagnetic railgun systems. In Star Wars, we've seen everything from Tusken Raiders using simple slug rifles to high-tech shatter guns that were used by the Verpine species. The key advantage of slug throwers is simple. They can't be easily blocked or deflected by a lightsaber. Plasma-based weapons emit energy signatures that Jedi can anticipate and deflect. A small, fast-moving piece of metal, however, much harder to see, much harder to stop. Even if that projectile comes in contact with a lightsaber, it may not fully disintegrate or melt before passing through the Jedi or the Sith's lightsaber blade, possibly passing through it completely and killing its target. Best case scenario against a slug thrower for a lightsaber wielder is scorch marks on their cloaks and armor, since sparks inevitably fly when vaporizing metal. Some slug rounds are just metal slugs, but others include advanced payloads like poison, explosives, or even ion bursts. In some cases, a hybrid design is used. The slug is electrically accelerated, making it far more lethal than a simple bullet. These coil guns, sometimes called Gauss rifles, are silent, accurate, and terrifyingly powerful. While uncommon in military use, slug throwers remain a favorite among bounty hunters, assassins, and anyone hunting force users. The one caveat to slug rifles, however, is that these weapons can jam. Unlike energy weapons which just require a cooldown, slug throwers and weapons using traditional ammunition require a full reload and can sometimes jam the internal mechanisms, rendering them useless. Now we enter forbidden territory. Disruptor weapons are so brutal, so horrific, that they've been banned by nearly every major galactic power. What makes them so dangerous? Simple. They don't just kill. They erase. Disruptor rifles fire a specialized particle beam tuned to destabilize matter at the molecular level. When the beam makes contact, it rapidly breaks down the molecular bonds that hold the target together, causing matter to disintegrate in seconds. Unlike standard blasters, disruptors don't rely on plasma or combustion. They use high-frequency oscillations combined with exotic particle fields. The exact science is often redacted in-universe, which only adds to their terrifying essence. These weapons are so devastating that a single hit can obliterate a starship. Imagine what it could do to a humanoid target. No body, no remains, just scattered atoms and scorched air. 
The Empire famously used T-7 disruptor rifles against the Lasat people, an atrocity mentioned but not dared to be shown in Star Wars Rebels, leading to their universal classification as weapons of war crimes. Even in the criminal underworld, owning one is a death sentence if the wrong people find out. Sometimes you don't just want to neutralize a target, you want to burn them out, and that's where incendiary blaster types come in. Unlike traditional plasma bolts, these weapons are designed to ignite targets, not just wound them. There are two common methods used. The first involves mixing the plasma with a volatile chemical accelerant, essentially turning each bolt into a mini fireball. The second fires a canister or a stream of liquid incendiary gel, often ignited mid-flight. This gel, similar to napalm, sticks to surfaces and burns at extremely high temperatures, making it perfect for area denial, flushing out entrenched enemies, or creating firewalls on the battlefield. Flame troopers deployed by the First Order carried fuel tanks connected to their weapons, allowing sustained bursts of fire that could melt through Duracell or ignite entire trenches. Clone forces used similar tools on Geonosis. They're brutal but effective and terrifying to watch in action. Lastly, we come to something a little more specialized, but no less dangerous, electronets and taser-style bolts. Often used by bounty hunters and Trandoshans especially, these weapons are meant to capture, not kill. When fired, the weapon launches a compact net of conductive filaments, either through compressed gas or electromagnetic propulsion. Upon impact, the net unfolds, wrapping around the target and instantly discharging a non-lethal but incapacitating electric current. This stuns muscles, locks joints, and forces the target to the ground. Many versions include self-tightening filaments powered by micro-servos, preventing escape without external help. They're especially effective against force-sensitive targets who might otherwise resist mental interference or deflect physical projectiles. So there you have it, a breakdown of the science and tech behind some of Star Wars' most fascinating types of blaster ammunition. From plasma bolts to sonic waves, from ion pulses to outlawed disruptors, each one represents a different philosophy of combat and a different piece of galactic history. If you enjoyed this dive into galactic technology, make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments which weapon or system you'd like to explore next. Maybe we'll tackle the secrets of lightsaber construction in the future, or the strange technology behind hyperspace navigation. Until next time, may the Force be with you.